Are you tired of waking up to a completely empty base and want to survive for more than just one night? In this video, we'll explore the best strategies for base and compound defense to not only deter raiders, but to also stop them in their tracks. Hey guys, Jafai here, and let's get started. There are several key strategies for defending your base, including choosing the right location, designing your base effectively, setting up alerts, and using traps. Location is the first and most important factor in base defense. The best defense against raiders is to avoid them altogether. To do this, you should avoid building near popular monuments such as the launch site, oil rigs, excavator, or large open spaces that clans might want to claim. If you're not always active in game, it's a good idea to choose a secluded location away from high traffic areas. This will reduce the chances of someone stumbling upon your base and deciding to raid it. On the other hand, if you're more active and enjoy a bit of action, you might want to build closer to lighter monuments like the dome, power plant, or missile silo. However, it's still a good idea to avoid building near roads or open spaces. Remember, every person who sees your base is a potential threat. If you're unable to hide your base, the next best option is to focus on creating a strong and well-designed base to protect your loot. Smaller or more roleplay looking bases typically attract solo or small group raiders, while large metal compounds will most likely attract large clans with the resources to raid them. If you're playing on a vanilla server as a solo player or part of a small group, there's not much you can do against a large clan if you build a big threatening base. I've seen multiple groups with so many rockets to the point they're using them to shoot nearby nakers. However, if you're playing on a solo duo trio server, building a large base can be more practical as you have a better chance of slowing down or stopping the raiders from reaching your loot. If you're active and plan on fighting against the raiders, there are many base designs that incorporate smart angles for picking at your enemies or slowing them down. A favourite of mine was building a symmetrical base with multiple trick entrances. Unless your raiders have actually seen where you come in and out from, they'll have multiple chances to get the wrong door and waste resources and time. This has been successful for us as the raiders went through two of the trick doors before giving up. It's also important to avoid building large flat surfaces on your base, as raiders can use rockets to destroy multiple walls at once with splash damage. You can break up these surfaces with honeycomb spikes or edges. Inside your base, you should focus on protecting your primary loot and tool cupboard by upgrading the surrounding surfaces with armored tier or double layering ceilings with half walls. Ideally, the door should be the weakest entry point into your base, as this allows you to funnel raiders through a specific path. When building a base, it's a good idea to calculate the cost of raiding from each angle and entrance. This will help you identify weaknesses and determine whether it's worth upgrading certain walls. Bunker bases are also a popular choice due to the weakness of doors. These designs allow you to seal off your loot when locking off or leaving the base. When you want to open it back up, you can simply destroy the twig wall or support. Bunker bases can deter many players from raiding your base due to the high cost of doing so. There are numerous types of bunker bases, so look around on YouTube for some awesome ways to incorporate them into your base. If raiders still decide to raid your base despite your best efforts, one of the last lines of defense is to fight back. However, this can be difficult if you're offline or away from your base. You can use the Rust Plus app to connect to your server and receive alerts if your player has been killed. But by the time this happens, it's often too late. It's a good idea to set up detectors around your base connected to a smart alarm to alert you if anyone enters or comes close. Cameras can also be useful for verifying whether a threat is real. If you're lucky enough to be online when a raid occurs, you'll need to be ready to fight back. The weapon racks and lockers are a great way to quickly equip a raid kit that focuses on armor protection and damage per second. Fully automatic weapons like the MP5, Thompson, AK or M249 are effective for defending against raids. Also, the Spaz-12 with incendiary ammo can be a great way to temporarily fully block off an entrance, slowing the enemies down. A full heavy metal kit is the best armor for holding vital corners, as it will allow you to kill the enemies faster than they can kill you. If you need to move around a lot, consider using metal armor or a jacket kit. Traps are your last line of defense and aren't expected to stop raiders from getting your loot if you're offline. 
raiders can easily drain the trap's ammo or destroy them with a few shots or flaming arrows. At best, the traps will alert nearby groups to the raid and potentially cause the raiding party to be killed. However, if you're online during a raid, traps can give you a significant advantage by slowing down or even killing some of the enemy raiders. Use this time to push and make a play instead of sitting back and waiting for them to re-gear. For inside your base, I would recommend using shotgun traps along with drop downs. They're cheap and easy to load with shotgun shells. And up close they can be deadly, killing the enemies before they even have time to see them. You can create compounds around your base using wooden or stone compound walls, along with their corresponding gates. Compounds provide a safe space for you to move around, cook resources in large furnaces, and quickly store resources. The wooden wall is the cheaper option, requiring a level 1 workbench and 590 scrap to unlock in the tech tree. Wooden walls can also be found in certain loot boxes. They have 500 HP and can be destroyed using explosives or fire projectiles. The main disadvantage of wooden walls compared to stone walls is that they can be easily destroyed using a flamethrower or fire arrows. However, because they're easy to access and craft, they're an excellent choice for an early game defense. If a player attempts to climb over it with a ladder, the spikes will deal damage every time the player moves through it. The strongest compound wall is the stone tier, which requires a level 2 workbench and 1450 scrap to unlock in the tech tree. Stone compound walls can also be found in certain loot boxes, and are often sold by other players. If you're able to find a stone wall, you can research it directly to skip the tech tree and save some scrap. Like wooden walls, stone walls have 500 HP but are stronger in every way. They can't be burnt down and require explosives to destroy, so players will likely try to find ways to build around them. If players attempt to climb over it with a ladder, the spikes will deal damage every time the player moves. You'll need to make sure your walls are within the radius of a tool cupboard, as they will decay after 8 hours. Gates aren't strictly necessary for your compound, as you can create a custom front entrance protected by metal barricades instead. It's important to find the right distance to place your compound walls. If you place them too close to your base, you won't have enough room for large furnaces or to move around freely outside. If you place them too far away, you'll need more walls and they won't fall under your TC's radius. I'd recommend placing external tool cupboards around your base at spaced out intervals so their edges overlap. You only need a basic stone triangle with a tool cupboard filled with enough stone to last the duration of the wipe, typically 1k stone per triangle. Once you've placed the TC, you can seal it up. This stops players from building a tower close enough to your base to jump over the compound wall. Instead, they'll have to either build over the wall using a ladder, or fly over using a minicopter, balloon, or scrap heli. Be careful when placing your compound walls as you can't pick them back up once they're placed, and they can be difficult to align on uneven terrain. I don't, I don't see a hole in, I don't see a hole at all in this. This is perfect. Mate, how, how the fuck are you gonna patch this one up? OCD. Okay, this is bong as fuck here. I just fucked this up as We're well. We're gonna have to rebuild oh, oh, what have you oh, done? What have you done now? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Ideally, the walls will snap together, allowing you to form a long chain. The most challenging part is finishing the chain at the end. Sometimes you get lucky, while other times you need a plan ahead when placing your walls, to allow for a smooth final placement without any significant gaps. SAM sites can help protect your base against enemies flying over it, or MLRS rockets. However, if enemy players fly fast enough, they can evade your SAM rockets. The same is true for MLRS rockets, as a single SAM turret won't be able to protect against all of them. Two SAM sites will typically defend against the majority of the rockets fired, while three SAM sites will protect against all of the MLRS rockets fired at your base. Three SAM sites will also make it much more difficult for helicopter pilots to evade them. You can purchase a SAM site at the Outpost Weapon Shop for 500 scrap. Once you've acquired one, place it on your roof or nearby location with a clear view of the sky. Keep in mind that SAM sites can only shoot at helicopters that are higher than where they're placed. 
so if you place them too high, players can fly low and evade the rockets. Even with TC access, your own SAM turret will shoot at you. You can change the firing mode to Defender, which means it will only shoot at MLRS rockets and not helicopters. Each SAM site requires 25 power to operate. This means you can't power a single SAM site with a small battery due to its low max power output. But you can power two SAM sites with a medium battery and up to four SAM sites with a large battery. Once your SAM site is powered, you can fill it with SAM ammo. You can purchase six rockets from the outpost's weapon shop for 75 scrap. Or craft them a level 2 workbench for a total cost of 2,375 scrap with the tech tree. Alternatively, you can purchase the ammo at the outpost for 75 scrap, and then research it directly at the research table for another 75 scrap to learn its blueprint. If you're a homeowner or raider, it's useful to know the durability of SAM sites. They can be taken down using various explosive devices, with the cheapest and easiest being the flamethrower. For melee attacks, the jackhammer is the clear winner, taking only 21 seconds to destroy a SAM site if you have two of them. To protect your SAM sites against close quarter damage, I would recommend placing an auto turret near them. As for range, SAM sites begin firing at a distance of 150 meters or one square, both horizontally and vertically. Each hit deals 125 damage, so here's the number of shots it would take to destroy each vehicle. Be aware that SAM site rockets can also damage nearby deployables, so be careful that players don't abuse this to damage your windmills or towers. Correct placement of auto turrets within your compound is essential for keeping enemies outside. I have a dedicated guide for the auto turret that covers all of its details and strategies if you'd like to learn more. Start by building dedicated extensions from your base to hold the turrets. It's also common to protect turrets with walls or by placing them against the compound wall facing inwards, which helps prevent enemies from shooting them from outside the compound. If you put a chain link fence in front of it, it can still shoot out but makes it harder for enemies to damage it by throwing grenades, shooting fire arrows at it as fireballs don't ignite, and smacking it. Placing turrets on your roof is also important to prevent players from landing on your base, destroying your SAM sites, or stealing any minicopters you might have. This is best achieved by positioning each turret facing towards the center of your roof, and surrounding them with walls and a gate so it's difficult to be shot from the ground. A common weapon for external turrets is the Python Revolver, due to its accuracy, damage, and low cost. With a Python, it will take 7 shots to fully kill a Metal Geared Raider, so it will need to reload. For an easy solution, you can use wooden or metal spikes to protect your compound walls. These can be placed either inside or outside the walls. Placing spikes outside prevents players from easily walking up and placing a ladder to climb over the wall while placing them inside makes it difficult for raids to climb down without dying. You can also place heartbeat sensors around your compound and wire them up to a smart alert system. This will notify you on your phone if a player enters your compound, which can help you protect your large furnaces from being ransacked or alert you to a potential raid. Finally, you can place traps such as landmines and bear traps in open spaces. Just remember to avoid them yourself and shotgun turrets in your compound walls pointing upwards to make it harder for raiders to climb over. And that's it. Thanks guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.